Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I start with the today's session, uh if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever we come up with a new video that might be helpful for you, you can be notified about the same. And if you want the free PDFs of these sessions, then you can join our Telegram group. Here we provide the free PDFs. The link is in the description below. Now, rather than coming to the first question, we are first going to discuss the entire topic today. And at the end, we have few questions related to this topic. So you might be aware that uh, the Monetary Policy Committee meeting was held recently, and the Monetary Policy Statement has been released. so we are going to cover that bi monthly monetary policy statement and along with that comes the statement on the developmental and the regulatory policies so both of these things we will be covering first in detail and then at the end we have the questions related to this so to start with the monetary policy statement first when is the monetary policy committee meeting held or when the statement is released it is released bi monthly so after every two months this statement comes up all right so monetary policy committee had its meeting recently from 6 to 8 of december and now the monetary policy statement is out many of us were expecting that the rbi might tighten the policy it might change the rates taking into consideration the situation of the economy the things are improving all right after covid we have had a lot of recovery we are at a good recovery pace so it was expected that now the policy decision might be in uh, might uh, make the the policy rate change okay but what rbi has done it has still continued with its accommodative stance the monetary policy rates have not been changed so if i talk about the unchanged policy rates the repo rate that is the rate at which the banks can borrow from rbi in exchange of the securities for the short term is the same that is at 4% then the reverse repo rate at which the banks lend to rbi in exchange for again the securities the government securities for shorter term that is also kept same at 3.35% then the marginal standing facility rate that is the rate at which the banks can borrow from rbi in cases of emergency when your interbank market dries up that is also kept same that is at 4.25% same as it was earlier and lastly the bank rate that is the rate at which the banks can borrow from rbi for a longer term time period it is also same at 4.25% so sare hi policy rate jo pehle the wahi rahe hain koi change isme nahi aaya ye respective rates hain so rbi that is your monetary policy committee uh, has taken the decision to continue with the accommodative stance as long as it is necessary to revive and sustain the growth on a durable basis and to mitigate the impact of covid-19 ensuring inflation remains within the target levels so growth ensure karne ke liye aur sath hi sath ye dhyan mein rakhte hue ki inflation target limit ke andar andar rahe ye decision liya gaya hai what's the target level it's 2 to 6 percent i discuss about this in every monetary policy statement session whenever it comes up right so this is the monetary policy decision that has been taken in this very meeting now what was the main consideration underlying this decision aisa kyu kiya rbi ne policy rates kyu change nahi kiye hai kya major reason raha hai iska the recovery has uh, that had been interrupted by second wave of pandemic is regaining traction but it is yet not that strong enough to be self sustaining and durable although covid ke baad kafi achhi growth hui hai we have had a good recovery after the second wave of the pandemic but still the growth is at not that very level or the recovery is not at that very level that it can sustain itself uh, it can be durable so policy support is needed even now that's why rbi has taken this decision 
Moreover, there are downside risks emerging because of the new variant of COVID which is coming up. The new variant of COVID that is emerging, the Omicron, it had led to this very decision of RBI as well. So this factor has also influenced the decision. If again the things become worse and then the policy support is needed. Moreover, although this has not yet spread in India, but it has spread in other countries of the world. So we are not just confined to our own geographical boundaries. We trade with other countries. The decisions taken by the other countries also have influence on our country. The monetary policy decisions taken over there have an impact on our policy as well. So, this major reason raha hai hamara, ye policy mein hamare rates unchanged rakhne ka. Okay, hamari growth ho rahi hai, recovery ho rahi hai, but wo apne aap pe agar usko chhod diya jaya, policy support nahi mere, to ho sakta hai, hum log wapas track pe na apayin, jaysay pandemic se pehle the. And COVID के नए वेरिएंट में obviously नए रिस्क्स इमर्ज करी हैं या फिर और आगे इससे डर हो सकता है। So that's the major reason of keeping the policy rates same. Moreover, the economy is reopening. The high contact services which were earlier uh, not in place, now they have started resuming. And we expect in the third quarter that we will have good amount of growth. Okay, but uh, the new variant is emerging, so supply side disruptions are already there, high commodity prices are already there and now there are concerns of the new variant as well. So keeping these factors in mind, the projection for the real GDP growth is retained at 9.5% for financial year 2022. Alright, now when the next meeting will be held? In the month of December, the meeting has been held. Okay, after every two months it is held. So now it will be held in February. From 7th to 9th of February 2022, the next monetary policy meeting will be held. And again, this statement will come up, which we will be discussing at that time. All right, so this was all about the monetary policy decision that has been taken. Now let's come to the next part of uh, this very session. That is the statement on the developmental and the regulatory policies. So, this statement is our monetary policy statement, which is different measures that RBI takes, developmental and regulatory policy related, like the payment and settlement system, how can we enhance it, financial markets related, regulation or supervision better karne ke related, those all decisions are mentioned in this statement. So, we are going to discuss that. So, this statement talks about what? About various policy measures which relate to your developmental and the regulatory practices. So, three types of decisions have been mentioned over here. One set of uh, policy decisions are related to your regulation and supervision. Second set is related to the financial markets. And third set is about the payment and settlement system. So, ye teen areas may kuch policy measures RBI ne recommend kiye hai ya implement kiye hai. Let's discuss about that. Firstly, two major policy measures or major decisions have come up as far as the regulation and the supervision are concerned. So let's discuss them one by one. One is related to the infusion of capital in the overseas branches and subsidiaries of the bank. And second is related to the investment portfolio of the banks. All right. So let's discuss the first one now. It's related to infusion of capital in the overseas branches and subsidiaries of banks and retention, repatriation and transfer of profits by these entities. So the scheduled commercial banks which are there in India, if they want to infuse certain capital in their branches or in their subsidiaries which are located overseas or they want to repatriate some profit, transfer some profit, retain certain profit. So related to that, this new set of guidelines have come. So initially, as for the current requirements, if the banks wanted to infuse any kind of capital overseas or they wanted to transfer or repatriate the profits, they were required to take the prior approval of RBI and then they can take this decision. So, what was it RBI to take approval from RBI? If the RBI approved it, then you can infuse your overseas branches and subsidiaries in your capital. If you want to take a profit, repatriate or transfer, then you have to take the RBI approval from RBI. Now, what new decision has come up? What is the new requirement? The new requirement has come up in order to provide more operational flexibility to the banks. Banks have more operational flexibility to give this decision. What decision? The decision is that the banks, if they are meeting the regulatory capital requirements, then they uh, don't need the approval of RBI. Just by the approval of their own boards, they can uh, basically 
गेट इन्वॉल्व इन दिस एक्टिविटी सो वो आर बी आई के अप्रूवल के बिना अगर वो सारी कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट्स मीट कर रहे हैं तो अपने ही बोर्ड के अप्रूवल्स के थ्रू वो सब्सिडरीज ओवरसीज जो लोकेटेड हैं उनमें कैपिटल इन्फ्यूज कर सकते हैं या पैट्री रिपैट्रिएट कर सकते हैं ट्रांसफर कर सकते हैं अपने प्रॉफिट्स आर बी आई की अप्रूवल की जरूरत नहीं है सब्जेक्ट टू द फैक्ट दैट दे आर रिपोर्टिंग अबाउट द सेम सो वॉट इज द एक रिपोर्टिंग रिक्वायरमेंट है दैट इज द बैंक नीड टू रिपोर्ट सच इंस्टेंसिस विद इन थर्टी डेज to the chief general manager of department of regulation mumbai with a copy to the chief general manager in charge of the department of supervision central office in mumbai so rbi ke approval ki zarurat nahi hai provided that aap apni sari regulatory capital requirements meet kar rahe ho aur decision lene ke baad 30 days ke andar andar aap uski reporting bhi kar rahe ho timely and to who, which kind of bank this very provisions are a set of provisions are applicable it is for all scheduled commercial banks other than your foreign banks small finance banks payment bank and rrbs so inko chhod ke sare commercial scheduled commercial banks ke liye ye direction hai moving to the second uh, decision it is about coming up with a discussion paper on reviewing the prudential norms for investment portfolio of banks so banks ka jo investment portfolio hai usse related naye norms pe hum log ek discussion paper leke aayenge ye rbi ne bola hai existing regulatory instructions on classifying on valuing the investment portfolio by the scheduled commercial banks framework was last released in october 2000 so banks apne investment ko kaise classify kar sakte hain kaise value karenge wo sab related framework jo hai wo 2000 mein aaya tha over time bahut se changes hue hain we have had significant developments in standards on classification measurement valuing the investments how they are or they should be linked with the capital adequacy framework where various changes have been made in the domestic financial markets so there is a need to review and update these reforms and that's why rbi has taken this step it will come up with a discussion paper okay then the comments will be invited and then based on the comments final decision will be taken and the guidelines will be there on the rbi website abhi tak sirf proposal hai ki hum naye norms ke sath aayenge us pe comments invite kiye jayenge uske basis pe final decision liya jayega so rbi ne notify kar diya hai ki hum isse related discussion paper release karenge next coming to the financial markets related policy measures which have been taken so one measure has been taken and that relates to your external commercial borrowings and trade credit okay we uh, you might be aware that uh, rbi has told to transfer or transition from your libor to other alternate reference rate hame libor ka use na karke baki reference rates pe shift hona hai because there were various problems associated with libor i have taken numerous sessions where we have talked about this right so related to that a policy measure has come up so before that talking a bit about the external commercial borrowings and the trade credit so external commercial borrowings are the commercial loans which are raised by the eligible resident entities from recognized non resident entities so external uh, non resident entities se jab hum commercial loans raise karte hain to wo hai external commercial borrowing externally aap usko raise kar rahe ho then talking about trade credit often it happens that uh, we want to buy certain goods okay we don't pay immediately in cash but we get an option that uh, we are getting the goods on credit we will be repaying later on so that option is given to boost the trade right so trade credit is here related to that only it refers to the credits extended by the overseas supplier bank or financial institution or other lenders for imports of capital goods or non capital goods so hum log koi capital ya non capital goods import kar rahe hain so uski payment related hame thoda time de dete hain wo uh, other lender overseas lender supplier bank ya financial institution jisse hum wo lo, uh, assets ya wo goods import kara rahe hain that's trade credit so now what rbi has uh, recommended or what policy measure has it come up with if i talk about it currently what's the scenario currently the benchmark rate For foreign currency external commercial borrowings, जो foreign currency में external commercial borrowings होती हैं और the trade credit is offered, उसके लिए existing benchmark rate क्या है What's the existing benchmark rate for that? It is the six months LIBOR rate or six months interbank interest rate applicable to the currency of borrowing. So LIBOR या कोई और interbank interest rate six months के basis पे जो assess किया गया है, that's the uh, benchmark rate often used for such kind of loans. now 
uh, RBI has already said that we need to discontinue using the LIBOR and we need to shift to other alternate reference rates, right? So in uh, that regard, in order to make sure that the benchmark rate matches when you are discontinuing LIBOR, RBI has said that any widely accepted interbank or alternate reference rate applicable to the currency of borrowing may be used as the benchmark post discontinuation. So, if LIBOR is removed, then there is no alternate reference rate or interbank rate use kiya ja sakta hai as a benchmark rate ye rbi ne notify kar diya hai iske alawa kya change aaya hai in order to account the differences in the credit risk in the term premia uh, between libor and arrs for new foreign currency ecbs and tcs it's proposed to increase the all in cost ceiling so ab hum log transition kar rahe hain we are transition, transitioning from libor to other rate so there might be difference in the risks associated with those rates in the premium or basically the cost we have to incur with respect to that. So the overall ceiling on the cost has been increased. Okay. And uh, the overall ceiling in order to ensure a smooth transition of, from LIBOR to other alternate rates has also been increased. To enable the transition of existing ECBs and TCs linked to LIBOR, it's proposed to increase the all-in cost ceiling to of around 100 basis points over the ARRs. So, up up LIBOR to other rates mein shift ho rahe ho. Dono mein basically kind of risks associated alag hai. Jo aapko cost incur karni patti hai, wo alag hai. To overall maximum jo ceiling ho sakti hai, wo increase kar di gai hai. All in cost ceiling. By all in cost, I mean including everything like the rate of interest, what fees you have to pay, what expenses you have to incur, what charges you have to incur. All those things have been included in all in the cost. So, its ceiling has been increased. Basically, they have made the things smoother when it comes to transitioning from LIBOR to other alternate reference rates. And now, instead of LIBOR, other alternate reference rates can be used as the benchmark rate. So, this is the second decision, the second policy measure which has come up under the financial markets. Coming to the next set of uh, measures which relate to payment and settlement systems. So, payment or settlement systems ko or enhance karne ke liye or better unka utilization karne ke liye char type ke policy measures aaye hai. So, we will discuss them one by one. These are the four policy measures. Let's pick them one by one. The first one says to come up with a discussion paper on charges in payment systems. So, we digitally payments karte hai. Hum usse related jo charges hai. Us pe ab hum ek discussion paper leke aayenge ye RBI ne kaha hai. Why so? See, entities involved in providing digital payment services, they incur the cost which are generally recovered from the merchant and the customer. Ab entities digital payment services ke saath aa rahi hai, to uske liye unko cost incur karni patti hai, jo wo customer ya merchant se recover kar lete hai. We have, if we are utilizing certain services, we have to pay for that. Okay. Although there are both advantages and disadvantages of customers bearing the charges, they should be reasonable. They should be reasonable and should not be a deterrent in adopting the digital payments. अब आपको कोई digital payment करनी है. अगर आपको दिख रहा है कि आपको उस पर 20 रुपी देना पड़ेगा per transaction. और वही अगर आप वो payment ना करके cash जाके किसी को दे आओ, तो आपकी वो पैसे पचेंगे. So people might think that, okay, we should not go for digital payments. Okay, but if this amount is not charged, आप से आप free में service आपको मिल जाएगी कोई भी, then it will be problematic for the entities which are incurring that cost. All right, so a reasonable amount should be charged. हमें ऐसा एक decision लेना है कि हम बहुत ज़्यादा charge भी ना करें और इतना कम भी ना करें कि जो payment systems cost incur कर रहे हैं वो अपनी cost ना cover कर पाएं. So a reasonable amount should be charged so that people stop don't stop using the digital payments. Okay. So, to take these kinds of issues into consideration, RBI has proposed to issue a discussion paper related to charges involved in various channels of digital payment. So, we need to give these charges in free, how many of them are in charge, and RBI will come discussion paper. Alright, the paper will also seek feedback on issues related to the convenience fee, the surcharging, etc. and the measures to make digital transactions more affordable and economically remunerative to the providers. So, this discussion paper comments invite karega ki hume, uh, this paper will invite the comments at what amount should be charged, whether it should be provided, the digital services should be provided at free, some amount should be charged. They will address the issues or related to the convenience fees, surcharging and 
seek feedback on coming up with such rates such charges so that it's affordable for the users also and it's uh, remunerative for the service providers as well so is there any discussion paper jab aayega hum log usko detail mein discuss karenge coming to the next policy measure it's related to upi for the feature phone users so if i talk about feature phone users one is that we make use of the smartphones where we use the internet facility and all then there are people who are not using the smartphones they are using the basic phones uh, where we uh, just can make the calls and get the messages we don't have the access to the इंटरनेट फैसिलिटीज ओके सो जो बेसिक फोन होते हैं अभी भी वो बहुत ज्यादा यूज किए जाते हैं इंडिया में इंडिया हैज अ लार्ज मोबाइल कंज्यूमर बेस ओके अराउंड वन वन एट करोड़ मोबाइल यूजर्स इफ दे आर देयर देन आउट ऑफ देम सेवेंटी फोर करोड़ आर हैविंग स्मार्टफोन रिमेनिंग आर यूजिंग द फीचर फोन इन इंडिया सो दीज फीचर फोन यूजर्स हैव लिमिटेड एक्सेस टू इनोवेटिव पेमेंट प्रोडक्ट्स अब अलग अलग हमारे पेमेंट के मैकेनिज्म्स आते हैं हम इजीली गूगल पे कर लेते हैं अमाउंट ओके वी यूज पे टी एम एंड ऑल सो ये हमारा इजीली स्मार्टफोन्स में तो यूज हो जाता है बट उन फीचर्स फोन में ये चीजें हमारे लिए अवेलेबल नहीं है दीज थिंग्स कैन इजीली बी यूज ऑन द स्मार्टफोन्स बट नॉट ऑन दोज फीचर फोन दो बेसिक फोन विच यू वी यूज टू हैव अर सो रिलेटेड टू दैट वट आर बी आई हैज सेट सी ऑल दो इन फीचर फोन्स वन टाइप ऑफ फैसिलिटी वॉज प्रोवाइडेड दैट वॉज एन यू यू पी एन यू यू पी स्टैंड फॉर नेशनल यूनिफाइड यू एस एस टी प्लेटफॉर्म सो वॉट वॉज दिस प्लेटफॉर्म हेयर यू जस्ट हैव यू हैव वन कोड विच यू कैन डाइल इफ यू आर हैविंग अ बेसिक फोन यू कैन डाइल दिस वेरी नंबर ओके एस्ट्रिक नाइनटी नाइन हैश एंड वेन यू विल basically call on this number you will be directed uh, to make certain kinds of transactions you if you want to transfer some funds if you want to get the statement so using feature phones also this option is available so nuup is an option to avail the basic payment services using short code but this thing has not picked up a lot in india jitna humne upi wagera ka use smartphones mein karna shuru kar diya hai ऐसी टाइप ऑफ ये फैसिलिटी जो फीचर फोन के लिए है इसने अभी इतना पिकअप नहीं किया है इसका इतना ज्यादा यूज नहीं हो रहा और राइट सो टू डीप इन द फाइनेंशियल पेनिट्रेशन टू ब्रिंग द फीचर फोन यूजर्स इन टू द मेन स्ट्रीम डिजिटल पेमेंट इज दब्जेक्टिव है हम लोगों को फीचर फोन यूजर्स को भी डिजिटल पेमेंट्स का बेनिफिट लेने देना है उनके लिए भी कुछ लेके आना है दैट्स दी ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ आर बी आई ओवर है सो इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द रेगुलेटरी सैंड बॉक्स okay various innovators they come up with various demonstrations so under the theme of retail payments many of the innovators came up with certain solutions where despite of not having the internet the digital systems could be used the digital payment systems could be used by the people these products coupled with other complementary solutions will facilitate upi based digital payment solutions and feature phones to promote by the digitization is the objective of rbi here so तब रेगुलेटरी फ्रांस एंड बॉक्स में काफी इनोवेटर्स अच्छे सोल्यूशन के साथ आए थे हमें उस पर और वर्क करके और बेटर सोल्यूशन लेके आने और उन्हें इम्प्लीमेंट करना है दैट्स दी आइडिया ऑफ आर बी आई इट इज प्रपोज टू लॉन्च अ यू पी आई बेस्ड पेमेंट प्रोडक्ट फॉर फीचर फोन यूजर्स एंड फर्दर डिटेल्स विल बी अनाउंस शॉर्टली सो आर बी आई ने ये बता दिया है कि हम लोग एक यू पी आई बेस्ड पेमेंट प्रोडक्ट के साथ आ रहे हैं फीचर फोन यूजर्स के लिए भी और इसकी डिटेल्स शॉर्टली वो अपनी वेबसाइट पर रिलीज कर देंगे सो दिस इज द सेकेंड इम्पॉर्टेंट डिसीजन टेकन फॉर इन्हांसिंग द यूज ऑफ डिजिटल सर्विस बाई दी फीचर फोन यूजर्स सो इससे हमारा पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम जो डिजिटल सिस्टम है वो और ज्यादा यूज में आएगा देन कमिंग टू दर्ड पॉलिसी मेजर विच हैज बीन टेकन इट्स अबाउट सिंप्लीफाइंग द प्रोसेस फ्लो फॉर स्मॉल वैल्यू ट्रांजेक्शन ओवर यू पी आई सो वेन यू पी आई केम अप द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज दैट पीपल स्टार्ट यूजिंग यू पी आई फॉर लो वैल्यू ट्रांजेक्शन एंड वी सक्सीडेड इन दैट ऑब्जेक्टिव एज वेल अराउंड फिफ्टी परसेंट ट्रांजेक्शन वर ऑफ अमाउंट बिलो रुपी टू हंड्रेड सो दो सौ रुपये से कम के मेजरली ट्रांजेक्शन होते हैं यू पी आई के थ्रू दीज लो वैल्यू ट्रांजेक्शन हाउ एवर यूज लॉट ऑफ सिस्टम कैपेसिटी एंड रिसोर्सेज at at times need to customer inconvenience due to transaction failures because of issues related to connectivity now these small transactions are happening in a large number when these transactions are happening they are obviously using the system the resources the capacity and at times the transaction failures happen because of such small transactions and because of that the customers have to suffer 
सो so, ये छोटे छोटे ट्रांजेक्शन बहुत ज्यादा होते हैं इतने ज्यादा ट्रांजेक्शन होंगे और बेसिकली कई बार जो सिस्टम है उसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम आ जाती है उसकी रिसोर्स और कैपेसिटी तो यूज हो रही है ना सो वी नीड टू वर्क ऑन दैट सो इट इज देयर फोर प्रपोज टू ऑफर अ सिंपलर प्रोसेस फ्लो बाई इनेबलिंग स्मॉल वैल्यू ट्रांजेक्शन थ्रू एन ऑन डिवाइस वॉलेट एंड यू पी आई एप सो इन छोटे अमाउंट की ट्रांजेक्शन के लिए आर बी आई ने प्रपोज किया है कि हम लोग यू पी आई एप में ही एक ऑन डिवाइस वॉलेट बना देंगे जिसके थ्रू ये ट्रांजेक्शन हो पाए इट विल कंजर्व द बैंक सिस्टम रिसोर्सेज विदाउट एनी चेंज इन दी ट्रांजेक्शन एक्सपीरियंस फॉर द यूजर अब आपके बैंक से पैसा कट के कहीं और जाना होता है यू पी आई में सो एट टाइम द ट्रांजेक्शन फेल्स Now, if the amount on the UPI app is saved on the wallet, okay, then from the bank end, that amount don't need to be doesn't is not required to be added in the wallet and further to be transferred. So the inconvenience which was caused will be redressed through yeah. this. So this is one of the other measures which have been suggested by RBI. Now coming to the last part of our session, the last policy measure. That is to increase the UPI transaction limit limit for specific category. So, कुछ किसी category में UPI transaction की limit बढ़ा दी गई है. Let's see which category are we talking about. So, RBI has has been making a lot of efforts to make sure that the retail customers participate in the financial market. So, हम लोगों हम लोगों ने इसके बारे में discuss भी किया था कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा retail customers government securities में invest करें. इसके लिए रिटेल डायरेक्ट स्कीम आरबीआई ने लॉन्च की थी रिसेंटली ही ये लॉन्च की थी हम लोगों ने इस पर डिस्कशन किया था ओके सो एंड वेयर यूपीआई इन एडिशन टू अदर ऑप्शन सच एस इंटरनेट बैंकिंग कैन आर यूज सो यूपीआई का हम यूज इनके लिए पेमेंट करने में भी करते हैं ओवर टाइम यूपीआई हैज ऑल्सो बिकम पॉपुलर फॉर आई सो रिटेल डायरेक्ट स्कीम में आई में यू एक पॉपुलर ऑप्शन है इट इज रिपोर्टेड That IPO applications of two to five lakh constitute approximately ten percent of the subscriptions. Okay, so major jo IPO applications aati hain, wo two se five lakh ki aati hain. The transaction limit in the UPI system was enhanced from one lakh to two lakh in March 2020. Ab two lakh se five lakh tak ka apko amount pay karna hai. UPI ki limit one lakh thi, which was extended to two lakh in March 2020. So, in order to encourage the use of UPI by retail investors, what RBI has proposed? It has proposed to enhance the transaction limit for you uh, for payments through UPI for retail direct scheme and IPO application from two lakh to five lakhs. And separate instructions will be issued shortly. So, जो हम retail direct scheme के अंदर हमें payments करनी है या IPOs के लिए हमें IPO applications के लिए हमें payment करनी है, so उसके लिए limit दो लाख से बढ़ा के five lakhs कर दी गई है. Basically, इससे related RBI separate instructions भी issue करेगा थोड़े time में. So, this was all about the statement of developmental and the regulatory policy. So, अब हमने discuss कर लिया है monetary policy statement और statement of development and regulatory policies. Let us come to the questions now. Now, if you have understood this entire statement, these questions will be really very easy to answer. The first question says, when does RBI come up with the monetary policy statement after having deliberations at the MPC meetings? Very easy, very basic question. कब RBI monetary policy statement के साथ आता है? Bi monthly, हर दो महीने में आती है. So answer is option C. Coming to the second question. Which of the following correctly states the policy rates decided by MPC after its recent meeting of December 2021? So, in में से कौन सही rates mention? कौन से सही rates हैं जो mention हैं यहाँ? Repo rate is unchanged at 3.35. नहीं, repo rate 4% है. Reverse repo rate unchanged at 4%. No, it is 3.35. MSF rate unchanged at 4.25. This is correct. Bank rate unchanged at 4%. No, it's at 4.25. So, सिर्फ थर्ड ही करेक्ट है ओनली थर्ड इज करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए नाउ कमिंग टू दर्ड क्वेश्चन स्टेटमेंट ऑन डेवलपमेंट एंड रेगुलेटरी पॉलिसी रिलीज बाई आर बी आई अलॉन्ग विद मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी स्टेटमेंट ऑफ डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन सेट्स आउट वेरियस डेवलपमेंट एंड द रेगुलेटरी पॉलिसी मेजर्स टेकन रिलेटिंग टू वॉट रिलेटिंग टू योर रेगुलेशन एंड सुपरविजन फाइनेंशियल मार्केट पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम तो ये बता दिया गया है थोड़ा बहुत स्टेटमेंट ऑन डेवलपमेंट एंड रेगुलेटरी पॉलिसीज के बारे में अब क्वेश्चन क्या है विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ वेरियस मेजर्स टेकिंग ऑन द पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम सो कुछ मेजर्स रेगुलेटरी और सुपरविजन रिलेटेड है कुछ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स रिलेटेड है कुछ पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम रिलेटेड है 
इनमें से कौन सा पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट सिस्टम रिलेटेड नहीं है फर्स्ट वन क्लियरली मैं इट्स अबाउट द चार्जेस इन द पेमेंट सिस्टम दिस इज करेक्ट द सेकेंड वन इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट यूपीआई रिलेटेड तो ये बाकी जितने भी हैं या यूपीआई रिलेटेड मेजर्स हैं ये भी हैं डी इज इन करेक्ट डिस्कशन पेपर ऑन रिव्यू ऑफ प्रोडेंशियल नॉर्म्स फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट पोर्टफोलियो ऑफ बैंक दिस इज रिलेटेड टू रेगुलेशन एंड सुपरविजन सो दिस इज द इन करेक्ट वन नाउ कमिंग टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन it says the nuup service is a mobile banking service from npci using which financial and non financial transactions can be done using mobile without mobile internet connection in nuup a customer can access bank service by just pressing dash from his or her mobile phones so kya number dial karke hum ye services avail kar sakte hain it's option a aspect 99 hash or star 99 hash so this is the answer to this question Here it should have been question number four by mistake. We have mentioned it as question three. So this was all for today's session. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.